my name is Emma. I'm programs manager um, at Art Fund. Um, I've been at Art Fund for uh, over six years, um, and I manage a number of grant giving programs that are um, primarily to do with um, curatorial expertise and professional development opportunities. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, it, it's really nice to see everyone's faces. Um, my name is Merrin and I'm Media and Marketing Relationship Manager at Art Fund. Um, I've been there for about five and a half years um, and I am more on the marketing side of things, but I run um, Art Happens, our crowdfunding platform and Art Tickets, our ticketing platform. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about that as well. Great. So I'm just going to share my screen. We've got some slides to share with you. us. Great. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to begin with a little introduction to Art Fund and kind of who we are, um, just for anyone who doesn't know, and just a very brief intro because we're going to be talking in detail <laughs> about um, our programs and, and kind of how we can support museums. Um, so we are the national um, charity for art. We essentially exist to support museums. So we raise money to support museums. Um, and we do that in a variety of ways, which we're going to talk to you about today. Um, and we also have, you may be familiar with our National Art Pass. So we have um, 159,000 members who have a National Art Pass and they can use those, those National Art Pass cards to visit museums um, and, and kind of get benefits at our partner museums. Um, and the, they are kind of our primary um, way of funding our programs. So our members are really, really important to us in that the membership that they pay goes back into supporting museums and then they can kind of visit museums and kind of see the art and the exhibitions and the amazing things that you guys do um, with their National Art Pass. Um, so I'm going to hand over to Emma, who's going to talk through our programs and kind of some of the funding things that we've kind of got live at the moment. Um, and then I will be talking to you about Art Happens, Art Tickets and our kind of marketing support and how we can help you reach our members as well. Cool. Thanks, Marin. Um, so we are a funder, as we've, as we've said, but our support for the sector goes beyond just grant giving. And um, to kick off, we wanted to share what our priorities have been um, over the last year and will continue to be for, for um, the remainder of 2021. So firstly, responding to the crisis. Um, when the pandemic forced museums to close last year, we wanted to respond swiftly to provide support where it was most needed. Um, and in June last year, we launched the Respond and Reimagine grants, which supported museums in um, planning vital activity to continue connecting with um, their audiences and to prepare for reopening. So we gave over two million pounds um, through these grants. Um, and we also offered support to the um, Museum Development um, UK network, um, which uh, enabled different museum development networks to offer recovery grants um, in their region. So some of you might be familiar with that. In 2021, we remain committed to um, helping increase stability in the sector. Um, and we recently launched the Reimagine grants, which I'll be talking about later. We also want to offer practical help. Um, so acknowledging that reopening and implementing social distancing measures has been challenging for a lot of museums. Um, we've expanded our art tickets um, system, which Marin is going to talk about later, so I won't spoil it. Um, but we, uh, we now help hundreds of museums um, uh, deliver time ticketing. And we also help museums fundraise, recognizing that for a lot of museums, especially those that don't receive any public funding, um, fundraising has never been more important. Um, so we have a crowdfunding platform which helps connect museums with um, generous supporters, allowing them to raise money for uh, exciting art projects. Again, Marin will be talking about that later. Um, we also want to celebrate museums. We want to advocate for, for museums that acknowledge the positive impact that they have on our communities. Um, so last year in, in a, a year where good news was really hard to come by, we were uh, determined to celebrate the amazing work that museums were doing through our Museum of the Year Prize, um, which last year awarded five winning museums, um, including the Towner in Eastbourne. Um, we've just closed for applications for 2021, so it remains to be seen who will be on our shortlist. 
Um, we want to help shape inspiring collections. Um, we know that museums are facing a lot of financial hardship and really difficult budget decisions, and we are keen to ensure that collections can still continue to grow and develop. Supporting acquisitions has always been a, a core part of our work, and last year we helped over 70 organisations acquire more than 240 objects and um, works of art. And we also want to empower museum professionals. Um, over the last year, we've remained committed to supporting and developing the careers of curators and museum professionals at a time when uh, a lot of you have been um, furloughed and feeling quite isolated. We have supported networks to um, continue offering opportunities to, to get people together virtually through webinars, workshops, training sessions, and so on. Um, and we have continued to offer funding to support professional development and curatorial research. So that's a sort of really brief overview of what our priorities um, have been over the last year and what they continue to be um, for throughout 2021. So what we'd like to do today is, as Marion says, introduce all of our programs that are open for applications right now, so that you know what um, the opportunities are that are available to you. We've got um, fairly limited time, so I'm gonna be going through each one quite briefly, just to sort of give an overview, um, but we do have time at the end for questions, so do pop them in the chat if you've got any um, as, we, as we go along. Um, and also to note that we've got detailed guidance on each of our programs um, available on our website that you can look at after today's session. So to start off with, um, I'm gonna talk about acquisitions. This is our principal grant giving. It has been since we were founded in 1903, um, and it's what you might know us best for. Uh, we've got a budget of between four and five million a year to support museums and galleries to acquire um, objects. So we can support um, the purchase of works of art and other objects of artistic interest, um, dating from antiquity to, to the present day. And we also support commissions of new artworks. So there are three types of acquisitions applications, large, small, and time critical. Um, each one of them have uh, sort of different funding levels involved and um, slightly different processes. So just to run through them quickly. Firstly, um, small grants. These are works where um, the total cost of the work is uh, 15,000 pounds or under and where you're coming to us for seven and a half thousand pounds or less. And we generally can turn those applications around within eight weeks. Uh, large grants are for um, requests above that level, so works that cost more than £15,000 and where you're coming to us for more than £7,500. Those are considered at board meetings five times a year, so there are deadlines associated. Um, today is one of those deadlines, um, but it's not very helpful to let you know that. The next deadline is the 15th of September, um, and that's for a meeting happening in October. Um, and also auctions. If, if work if works come up at auctions, we can turn around applications quite quickly. Um, we, I, we ask that ideally we'd have an application from you um, at least 10 working days before um, the auction takes place. Um, but uh, we do sort of an, in, endeavor to turn those applications around as quick as possible. So, you know, don't assume that um, the time might be a, a limitation. Always do just drop us a line and um, we can advise whether we could take forward an application. So the application process for acquisitions is um, pretty straightforward. Um, we, we want to hear from you about why the object is important to your collections and how you would plan to display it or make it accessible to the public. Um, and I've got a work um, here um, by Vanessa Bell, which I thought I'd use as a little bit of a case study. Um, so this work was acquired by Charleston, um, which as you probably know, is, was the home of Vanessa Bell and they, they have lots of works by her. Um, the plates that you can see in the background um, were identified as the Omega dinner service, which were actually displayed on the dresser at Charleston, so it's likely that it was painted at the house. Um, and the piece had been in a private collection since its creation, so this, this acquisition would be the first opportunity for it to be on display to the public. Um, so with all that, Charleston was able to make a, a compelling case for acquisition. We also want to know about the condition of the work. So if it's anything less than excellent, we would ask you for a condition report. Um, and if it does require any conservation work before it goes on display, we'd want to know what your plans would be for that. 
We also ask for an independent valuation of the work from, from somebody preferably with specialist knowledge. Um, in this case, Charleston consulted the Department of Modern British Art at Christie's, who gave him a valuation that was um, quite far above the, the price that it was being offered to them for. Um, so they felt really reassured that they were actually getting, um, they were being offered a really good price. We ask you to provide um, provenance uh, about the artwork as, as full as possible. Um, and we also want to know what your funding package would be. <clears throat> so generally with applications uh, for acquisitions, we'd expect you to come to us for a, between 30 and 50% of, um, of the total cost and to look for other funding sources um, elsewhere. So with this work, um, we offered uh, 5,625 pounds and the total work cost just over 12,000 pounds. So the additional funding um, was found by Charleston from um, the VNA Purchase Grant Fund, and they also had a, a modest amount, um, just over £600 from, from a donor. We always ask you to get in touch with us if there's an acquisition that you might want to apply to us for, just so that we know what's coming, but also so that we can advise on eligibility um, and offer any advice on the application process. Um, I also should note that all our applications are uh, for, for all our programs are made through our online application portal. Um, and we just ask you to sign up as a professional member. Um, my colleagues, Ying and Nancy manage the acquisitions program. So if you get in touch with us um, uh, about acquisitions, you'll likely be speaking to one of them. Just gonna have a sip of water. Great. Um, so next up, I wanted to talk about the Western Loan Program, um, which provides funding for regional museums and galleries to borrow works from national collections um, to encourage the sharing of works more widely across the UK. And through the programme, we want to help regional museums loan and display objects to um, bring additional context to their own collections and to uh, sort of help engage um, new audiences. It's designed to help museums develop new or stronger relationships with, um, with major lending institutions um, and to increase their infrastructure, capacity and confidence in delivering loan exhibitions. So we offer grants between £5,000 and £25,000, which can support 100% of the practical costs involved with loaning objects. So this can include um, security reviews, insurance, transportation, conservation, new display cases, um, gallery invigilation, um, and the funding is also intended to help you maximize the impact of the loan. So it uh, can include marketing and promotional costs, um, which can include freelancers or consultants if you don't have a dedicated post in-house. Um, you can use it to support um, refreshing displays and labeling, offering digital activity, community engagement, um, and lots more. So as an example of what we support, um, last year, we offered Western Loan funding to Hastings Museum uh, and Gallery uh, to borrow this cross here, the Lampedusa cross from the British Museum. This cross is made from the remnants of a wrecked refugee boat, and it's going to be exhibited alongside works from Syrian born artists um, in a show that has been co-curated by local migrant and refugee groups in Hastings to um, explore the refugee experience. So the museum's grant is helping them to upgrade their lighting and their display cases to meet um, government indemnity standards. Um, and it's also supporting an extensive learning and engagement program. With the Western Loan Program, we are particularly keen to hear from um, museums who are new to borrowing um, and who don't have an ongoing relationship with a lender and would like, to, um, would like support to, to develop one. As part of this program, we've also developed a series of training webinars um, in partnership with the Touring Exhibitions Group, the National Museum Directors Council and um, the UK Registrars Group. And those webinars are intended to help guide you through the end to end borrowing process. Um, that's uh, accessible on our website and might be a good starting point if you're interested in applying. The next round of the Western Loan Programme opens on the 21st of June in just a couple of weeks. So if you are planning a loan exhibition in the future, or if you already have one in the works and are seeking um, additional support, um, do think about applying. 
So next I want to chat about our reimagine grants, which are the sort of next iteration of the respond and reimagine grants that we ran last year. Um, and it is uh, essentially project funding to support creativity and to increase stability in the sector. So our aims, um, as they are on the slide there, are to support organizations um, as they reimagine their activities following the pandemic and to help organizations build expertise, capacity and connections uh, within and outside the sector. So we're offering grants of between £5,000 and £50,000 to fund projects that meet those aims and which address at least one of our four priority areas for support. Um, but by no means do we expect you to, um, to sort of um, meet all four of them. Um, so just to run through those four priority areas, um, firstly collections. So this could involve um, revisiting uh, exhibitions or redisplays that were put on hold during the pandemic um, or planning future ones. It could be um, about considering how to reinterpret or reframe your collections uh, or to help increase expertise in collections management and maintenance, for example. Digital is our, our second priority area. Um, this could include boosting your infrastructure and skill set relating to digital work, uh, experimenting with digital content or events, or developing uh, hybrid models of activity. Engagement um, is the third priority. So this in might include improving access to your sites, uh, increasing participation amongst target audience groups, or embedding aspects of your work more fully in the community. And then finally, workforce, which could include increasing your capacity to deliver priority pro projects, um, increasing the skills and expertise of your workforce uh, through training, mentoring, and so on, or developing initiatives that help bring more and a wider range of people into the sector. Um, those are just some examples. We have some really comprehensive guidance um, on our website that has a lot more information about what we'd like to support you to do. We've got three funding rounds of reimagined grants between now and the end of the year, um, and we can offer 100% funding, um, but we're equally happy to be part of a, a larger funding package. We're open for applications now, uh, and the first deadline is the 5th of July. Um, and the final deadline this year for the reimagined grants will be the 4th of October. Um, oh, I should mention that uh, if you get in touch um, about reimagine grants, uh, my colleague Katie Lloyd um, is, is leading on the program. Um, and now there's a few professional development opportunities that I wanted to chat about. Um, and these are the programs that I look after. So the, the Headley Fellowships with Art Fund is designed to give curators the time and the resource to undertake um, in-depth research into their collections to help them develop um, a specialism um, and to support them in better caring for and interpreting collections. Um, and we are keen that these research projects that we support have both um, a public outcome and a sector facing outcome. So each fellowship has a value of up to £27,500. Um, part of that is a fellowship fee of, of £20,500, which will fund a curator's time for up to six months. Um, and this could involve um, backfilling the post of an existing curator. Um, it could mean increasing the hours of um, an existing part-time curator, or it could involve employing a freelance curator. Um, the fellowship also comes with additional funding of up to 7,000 uh, pounds that uh, is intended to support the project's development. So it can be used for um, research and professional development activities, including training opportunities, um, research trips, courses of study, and so on. That money can also support the sector outputs, um, such as workshops, study days, conferences, toolkits, anything that helps the, the fellow share their research and their newly gained expertise with the wider sector. Um, and it can also support public outputs such as on-site or digital exhibitions, redisplays and learning programs and so on. The Headley Fellowships are open to curators working with all kinds of collections, not just, um, not just art. Um, and we are keen to boost specialist expertise in regional collections specifically. So we welcome applications from um, curators based at local authority and independent museums um, and those operating outside London. 
Um, pictured uh, on the slide is Adam Smith, who's one of our fellows. He's curator of natural sciences at the Nottingham, Muse Nottingham Museum of Natural History, um, which holds a, a really extensive and significant botany collection. So his fellowship enabled him to increase his understanding of this collection, um, to improve collections care, um, as well as his knowledge of how to display and interpret those collections. Um, and as a result, there are specimens um, from the collection included across all areas of the museum's recent redisplay, um, including biodiversity and climate change. Um, and they have gone from having seven specimens on display to over 500. Um, I might be biased, but I think that the, the fellowships are a really great opportunity. Um, we've got 11 fellowships available to offer this year. Um, applications are open now. The deadline is the 30th of July. And if you are interested, um, please do get in touch with me. Uh, we also have the Jonathan Ruffer Curatorial Grants. Um, and I did uh, actually notice um, somebody who's attending today, um, Naomi, I think has been a recipient of these before, which is great. Um, so the program supports UK museum professionals who want to develop their curatorial expertise um, and their um, collections-based knowledge and who are seeking professional development opportunities. So this could be undertaking research trips, um, visiting exhibitions, attending conferences and workshops and so on. We've got 75,000 pounds available uh, a year through the program. And um, on average, we support between 60 and 70 museum professionals each year. The grants range from um, 200 pounds to several thousand pounds for a, a, a longer term research project. And um, again, we will consider 100% funding. Um, we can fund the practical cost of research. So you might consider applying for national or international travel, um, you know, when we can do that safely um, and accommodation and associated costs, um, training courses and programs of study, even books and journal subscriptions to add to your museum's resources. Um, this is another program that's not limited to those working with fine and decorative art collections. Um, so long as you can sort of demonstrate a benefit to your collections knowledge or to the, the organizations and the audience, the, or your organization and the audiences you work with, we're, we're happy to, to hear from you. Um, and to note, particularly with the smaller grants, we don't necessarily expect there to be a material outcome um, to your project. So we're not always expecting that your activities might lead to, you know, an exhibition or other programming. Individuals can apply to the rougher program up to twice in one year, and there's no limit at organizational level. So if a colleague has applied previously, that doesn't have any impact on your applying to us. Um, Small grants are um, offered on a, a rolling basis. Um, large grants, which are requests of £2,000 or more, um, have to be considered at, at committee meetings, which take place twice a year. So they do have deadlines associated with them. Um, and uh, again, this is a program that I manage. If you uh, would like to um, discuss a project um, that you'd like to undertake, um, do just get in touch. And then finally, I wanted to talk about um, student opportunities, which is a, a more recent program that helps bring together museums and galleries with our network of over 23,000 student members um, that we've been building over the last few years. So museums and galleries can apply for grants of up to 10,000 pounds, which can support them in engaging students to help them deliver projects. So the funding goes towards paying the students for their time um, which offers them um, meaningful work experience and the opportunity to um, explore career opportunities in the arts. Um, and the museum also benefits, obviously, in a number of ways. So they um, have the opportunity to uh, develop a wider and more diverse range of voices within their organization. Um, and they'll also have support from us with audience insights on how to shape the marketing of their opportunity to appeal to young audiences. Um, and through the program, museums can build their knowledge of how to effectively engage with students um, by working directly with students. Um, one of our recent successful applications came from the Scottish National Maritime Museum. They will be offering three paid opportunities for students to be involved with an upcoming exhibition. And the students will receive um, training in object handling. They'll be a part of the exhibition installation and they will also support the planning um, delivery and evaluation of two event days. Um, 
So this is a really great program that is mutually beneficial for both the museum and the students. Um, the program is looked after by my colleague, Rob Dingle. Applications are open now and they are considered on a rolling basis. So there are no deadlines associated with that. So that's ooh, been a really brief run through of all our current programs. <laughs> um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, all our programs have in-depth guidance documents that um, provide you a lot more information about eligibility, about what we'll support, and also what to expect from the application form. Um, but now I'm going to hand over to Merrin to talk about the other support that we offer. Thanks, Emma. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we, we also have um, some digital platforms and as well as kind of funding opportunities, we can really help you to kind of reach and engage new audiences um, with our marketing support and also with our two digital platforms, Art Happens and Art Tickets. Um, so I've seen there's a couple of names on here that are familiar in terms of what happens. So hi to you both. Um, and sorry for repeating everything you already know. Um, so crowdfunding um, with Art Happens, it can be really, really. So we, we launched Art Happens in 2015 um, and we've been we've supported 51 museums to raise kind of over a million pounds now with a variety of different projects. So it could be anything from raising money for an exhibition. Um, it might be the last part of a kind of capital project where perhaps you need to kind of kit out a space or there's something really specific that you need to raise money for as part of a, a larger project. So there's there's been a huge variety of, of projects. And I think the, the last year we've really seen um, a, a kind of greater need for developing the ways that we're fundraising and the way that we're kind of talking to donor audiences. Um, back in October, we helped uh, Charleston raise £160,000 through what happens to help them to stay open and to be able to kind of reopen this spring with um, a really strong kind of programme of events. Um, and I think as well in the, I think Art Happens has always been a really great way to kind of reach a new donor audience, engage people on a kind of different level in terms of fundraising. But I think with the last year, we've really seen that we've kind of had to engage people digitally in a whole different way. It's kind of been our only cultural outlet. And so I think now Art Happens and crowdfunding is a really great way to kind of really tap into that and to make, you know, carry on that hard work that you've all been doing with um, engaging digital audiences and kind of turning them into donors and, and kind of engaging them on a different level. So just a little bit about Art Happens. So it is a rewards-based crowdfunding platform. It's completely free to use. So we support the costs of you kind of running your campaign. Um, and what that means is that we would cover the cost of your campaign film. So we'd work with you to kind of create a really great two minute film, just kind of making your ask and, and kind of telling people about your project. We also cover the cost of creating um, some really great rewards. So they're kind of incentives for people to give. Um, so we would cover the cost of producing them and also fulfilling them. So we can help you with kind of literally the, the kind of sending out of rewards after your campaign has hopefully been successful. Um, but not only that, but you would also have access to uh, free workshops, one to one advice with the Art Happens team um, and a kind of variety of toolkits and resources to help you run a successful campaign. So we would work quite closely with you to kind of help guide you through what how to run a successful crowdfunding campaign, because it is quite different from um, other sort of fundraising um, appeals or it's, it's kind of a bit of a mix between fundraising appeal and marketing. Um, it's not only a really great way to raise money, but it also, as I mentioned, kind of helps you to reach a new donor audience. And I suppose what I mean by that is it's not necessarily kind of reaching um, you know those those really big givers although sometimes we we do and that's really great when that happens but it's really more about engaging people who already love your organization your visitors people who have followed you on social media people who have been engaging with you kind of online over the last year um, and kind of turning them into supporters um, and kind of engaging them on a different level. So it's really about kind of engaging those lower level um, donors and, and people who perhaps don't see themselves as philanthropic, um, making them feel like they can really make a difference with a fiver and get involved in 
um, whatever amazing projects it is that, that you're kind of trying to make happen because also not only will they want to support it but they're going to want to come and if it's um, for example an exhibition you're putting a really great exhibition on they give five pound they're really happy to kind of help you make this happen and then they're really going to want to come and see it they're going to want to talk about it and then they just feel far more involved with your organization so it's a really great way to do that um and of course, it also kind of raises the profile of your organization in general. So it can be a really great way to kind of get press and kind of break through some of those um, stories in press and kind of get some, some attention there. Um, and also raise the profile of you as a charity and kind of the work that you're doing as well. I think sometimes we've run campaigns for exhibitions and there've maybe been a few questions about why as a museum or a gallery, you're kind of raising money for an exhibition. But we know that's the reality of, of kind of, you know, these things don't happen for free. We have to fundraise to put exhibitions on and they cost quite a lot of money. So actually it's a really great way to kind of talk to people about that and, and raise awareness of the reality of kind of what it costs for people to be able to come and experience these these amazing things that you're doing um so i um i run art happens um so if you were interested in in doing crowdfunding and kind of running an art happens campaign you'd be getting in touch with me um and then just moving on to our kind of next digital platform so art tickets which emma mentioned at the beginning um so so Art Tickets was originally actually launched in 2018 after kind of two years of research and development. We saw that there was a gap in the market for a ticketing platform that really actually works for museums. Um, having previously worked in a small museum, um, actually in the southeast, I feel the pain. <laughs> um, I remember we were kind of working with a system that we kind of had to make it work for us. And it was, there were lots of different things going on. It was like, oh, if somebody books over the phone, we follow this system. If somebody comes to the front desk, we do this. And if someone books online, we're doing it that. And you're always trying to amalgamate lists and check capacity for events and things like that. Um, so kind of seeing that and kind of using that experience, we developed our tickets and we worked really closely with our network of museums to ensure that this was a system designed by museums for museums. We wanted to make sure and and just to say as well, this is really a system designed for kind of small to medium sized museums. Um, we're not trying to compete with kind of the likes of digi tickets or some of those bigger providers. Um, we wanted to make sure that it suits the needs of museums who don't have the resource or the budget to be able to use those systems and perhaps don't have any ticketing um, or didn't have any ticketing um, capability. Um, a few years ago. Obviously, we're now in a completely different position where everybody kind of has a need for ticketing because we need to now think about kind of visitor flow and timed entry. Um, so art tickets was kind of primed to, to kind of step into that gap as well. We began 2020 with um, 38 museums on the platform. So we were kind of slowly growing and we had plans to kind of really um, grow the platform. But when the uh, government announced that museums would be able to open on the 4th of July last summer, um, we were swamped <laughs> with museums who desperately needed time ticketing and very, very quickly. Um, so we were really happy to be able to kind of help 125 museums reopen last summer. Um, and you know, our tickets is free to use. It's really easy and quick to get set up. You can get set up with a trial to just have a play around with it and, and see if it's for you. Um, and it does, so you can do kind of timed entry for general admission, which is what the majority of our partners are using it for at the moment. Um, but you can also sell tickets for events, exhibitions. Um, it's kind of, it does free tickets, pay tickets. You can take donations through the system as well. So you can either kind of add a top up donation on a ticket, or you can also kind of, we created last summer, actually just a, a donation only journey for people to kind of run appeals as well. Um, because again, we saw that there were kind of so many different sorts of platforms being used and that a lot of museums kind of didn't have an inbuilt donation functionality on their website. So you can use it for that as well. 
Um, it's all kind of set up to take gift aid and everything like that. So rounding that up, it's a really easy kind of free to use system. Um, and if you want any more information on that, or if you want to kind of sign up for a trial, um, I've got our museum's email at the end of this um, presentation. Um, it's usually, so I manage our tickets, but as it's grown, we now have 185 museums on the platform. So there's kind of a team of us. Um, so you'd most likely be speaking to my colleague Ed um, in the first instance. Um, and he's really kind of on the front lines, um, helping museums with kind of getting onboarded on our tickets and also will be there to kind of help you with setting up your tickets or if you've got any questions um, at all in kind of what we're finding at the moment is that it's really for a lot of museums, it's really the first time that they've had to think about ticketing because perhaps they're free entry and they've not really had to think about admission ticketing before. And so we're really finding that we're supporting a lot of people with literally kind of how do we do this? How what, how do we think about capacity and visitor flow and how should we set this ticket up? Um, so we can we can help with that as well. Um, and in addition to that, we we also it's also a really great way to kind of start getting um, some data as well. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, so Emma, if you can move to the next slide, sorry. Um, we also have a dashboard. So there's an analytics dashboard. So you can see really easily um, where people are buying for it um, from, sorry. So it gives you some postcode data. Um, it tells you kind of the times people are buying. So you can kind of get a sense of kind of what time people are kind of looking to buy tickets, which can help to inform your marketing. Um, of ticketing so kind of when to sort of push it out on social media and things like that what's a popular time that people are, are sort of thinking about booking ahead um, and it also allows you to get opt-in data so when people are booking their ticket to visit you can also ask them if they want to hear from you um, and sign up to your kind of e-coms so it's a really great way to kind of start getting a picture of kind of who is visiting. And I think even if you are um, a free entry museum, um, obviously having the time ticketing is put us in a completely new position where we can start actually getting some of this data and, and really looking and finding out who is visiting us, where they're coming from, um, what they want to see and, and kind of how often people are coming as well. So you've got some real kind of hard figures to be able to use in kind of funding applications and to just um, annual marketing um, as well to, to really know who your audience are. And the analytics dashboard is just the beginning. So in 2021, we are going to be partnering with the audience agency. Um, thanks, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> seamlessly onto the next slide. Um, so we really want to make sure that Art Tickets isn't just a kind of stopgap for when we need to think about um, time ticketing. And we want to make sure that we develop the platform to ensure that it's really helpful and useful to um, our partners and to museums. And partnering with the audience agency is kind of the next step in that. So you've already kind of got your, your analytics dashboard, which gives, gives you a little starter, but this is gonna give you um, far more insight into kind of who your audiences are. This is gonna be completely free to use. Um, so you can, if you're using our tickets, you can sign up to Audience Finder, or you might already be familiar with that and using that. Um, and it's just gonna mean that you've got access to kind of wider data sources. It's gonna help you to develop um, business objectives um, and just really give you a solid audience understanding. So we're gonna be launching that kind of later in the year. So if you, I don't know if anyone is using our tickets, I was kind of having a look at, through at some of the names, um, <laughs> but if you are, keep an eye out for that. Um, and if you're interested in that, then um, do get in touch and chat to us about our tickets. Um, and then, I can't remember what my next slide is. Um, 
So as well as all of that, we can also help you to reach new audiences. So as Emma mentioned earlier, kind of one of our main aims um, as an organization is really that we are a huge advocate for museums. Um, and we really want to help more people see more art. So one of the ways we can do that is um, by promoting your organizations to our audiences. So we've got 159,000 members. They love visiting museums. That's why they've got a national art pass. Um, and we can support you by promoting your venue to them. Um, so your events, your exhibitions, um, your venue, kind of everything that you're doing, we want to tell our members about that so that we can encourage them to come and visit, use their national art pass, and it's all a lovely circle because all the money raised from memberships kind of goes back into supporting museums um, and funding our programs and keeping things like art tickets and art happens free. It also means that we do have a really strong audience for things like Art Happens um, and, and you know, when you're using Art Tickets, you can just submit your events to artfund.org as well. So it's really easy for us to kind of promote your events. Um, and our marketing support essentially includes promotion in our printed publication, The Art Map, um, which is pictured here lovely um, and also kind of across our digital channels so our social media our e-newsletters on our website and across those channels we've kind of got a much wider reach than just our members um, we have a lot of people who kind of follow us or sign up to our e-newsletter who just want to hear about kind of what's on and see us as a good source to to see where to go if they're visiting a certain town or what what great exhibitions are on at the moment um we're always working to kind of inspire more visits um so from things like the art map um through to um we're always kind of creating new content like our podcasts so we've got a meet me at the museum podcast um we did a new podcast last year called art and stuff which was really focusing on collections at a time when people kind of couldn't really visit museums um, and we've also just launched um, a new film series called Art Pass Recommends. So we're kind of working with partners to create um, really beautiful films um, that show off their collections and their venue um, to really try and get people back into museums um, and feel confident and excited about kind of getting back into culture and visiting exhibitions and, and kind of just helping to increase footfall at a really, really difficult time. Um, so that is, sorry, I think we've overrun a little bit. <laughs> There's so much to say. Um, but thank you for listening to us. Um, and that was quite a lot of information. Um, but as Emma said, everything is on our website. But if you want to get in touch to talk about any of these things, um, Museums at artfund.org is the best email for any marketing opportunities, art happens or art tickets, and programs at artfund um, for any funding opportunities. But if you email any of us or any of those emails, we'll help you. <laughs> um, and you can also sign up to our museum bulletin for kind of regular updates about um, funding deadlines and new programs as well. Hey, oh, thank you, everybody. Um, I think there is one question actually in the chat, or oh, two questions. There might be a few, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shall I do the, I'll do the art tickets one first. Um, so Shane's asked if um, art tickets can do membership and friends scheme subscriptions as well as one-off recurring donations. Um, so at the moment, no, although some museums are using it successfully um, for memberships and the way that they're doing that is they're setting up a ticket um, and then when the person comes to the front desk to visit for the first time they're then converting that into a membership um, and that's working quite well for them. I suppose Art Tickets isn't a CRM system, um, it's a ticketing system, but we are working with quite a few museums who are working alongside um, CRM systems quite successfully. And we're going to be sharing some case studies about kind of how they're doing that and how they're making that work really well. 
Um, and there's also a question about art happens. Um, so yes, crowdfunding, um, sorry, art happens can definitely be used for conservation and restoration projects as well. So yeah, we've, we've done a few successful campaigns um, with, with that sort of theme. Cool. So just to pick up a few of the other ones that have come through, um, do we only support accredited galleries and museums? Um, no, uh, we uh, are, are happy to hear from all kinds of um, museums. If you are um, new to us and you're you're not accredited, it might be that we just sort of want to have a, um, a, a bit more information um, about how you sort of, you know, meet um, uh, collections care standards and so on. Um, but uh, generally, no, we are really open. Um, let's see what else has come through. Uh, with Headley Fellowships, is this only available for curators? Um, thinking that if a director wanted to curate a show, might they be eligible to apply? Um, I think the, the first thing I would say is that I, we always feel a little bit wary of using the term curators because we acknowledge that a lot of um, people working in museums have, you know, sort of what are considered curatorial responsibilities, but they might not have the title. Um, so uh, firstly, you don't need to be a curator to apply um, so long as you are working with collections. Um, in terms of whether a director could apply, I think that's an interesting question. So the, the, um, the program is, as much as it is about facilitating research projects, it's also about, about providing professional development opportunities for, um, for individuals to help them develop a specialism. Um, so generally we expect to hear from people who are maybe sort of mid or senior level um, in, in their career but are sort of looking for that opportunity to um, develop a specific specialism. I think we, we definitely sort of acknowledge that different museums um, of different sizes have sort of different structures uh, and uh, that, you know, somebody with the role of director might also be very much involved in, you know, the, the, the care of the collections and so on. So I think, you know, on a, on a case by case basis, we'd be happy to chat about that. Um, and, and Donna, if you did want to um, get in touch and have a chat about that, I'd be really happy to. Um, question about the reimagined fund. Will the overall allocation of the reimagined fund be spent evenly over the grant rounds or is success more likely in earlier rounds? Um, we are planning to spread it evenly over the three rounds. Um, we're sort of acknowledging that at the moment, museums are really busy um, reopening um, and that they might not be able to to sort of meet that first deadline. We're really keen that, um, you know, that, that our support is sort of offered um, equitably. Uh, so we'll be planning to sort of, yeah, allocate those funds evenly across all rounds. So if you can't make the first round, um, don't worry about it. Um, and another question from Donna, um, does the Western grant have to be from a national or can it be from a regional museum with a specialist collection? Um, it's a really good question and I had to look it up <laughs> because I know that we, we've changed it over the last few years. Um, I should mention that my um, colleague Katie Lloyd, who looks after the um, Reimagine grants, also looks after the Western Loan Programme. Um, and no, it's not just limited to nationals. So we, in our guidance, we've got a list of eligible um, lending organisations, which includes nationals, but also Arts Council England, um, MPO Band 3 organisations and other UK museums that lend um, under um, government indemnity scheme conditions. Uh, so if you want the full list, it's in the guidance, but it's um, pretty broad. Um, and I'm just seeing what else has come through. Are MPAs eligible to apply for your programs? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Um, will the grants be similar for the following year or multiple years afterwards? And are deadlines generally similar in amounts, et cetera? I'm not sure, does that, does that relate? Um, is that, that's from you, Helen. <laughs> is that specifically about the um, reimagined grants? And no, it's just a general question, actually. Mm -hmm. I just wondered sort of how, how um, how long your grants stay similar? Which ones may mm. stay similar over the over a few years? Which may change every year? And you know how you yeah. really. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a bigger question about how you actually do that, which I'm also curious about in terms of you know whether it fits into like a strategy that you do every three or five years or something, and then you think about your grants aligning into that or 
but yeah. practically obviously for everyone here how, how likely is it you know that next year will be similar to this year and um, next two years yeah that's it's a good question and a, a, quite a few of the programs that we've talked about today um are funded by other funders so we have the support for example of the Hedley trust um of the um western foundation um the jonathan ruffer curatorial grants are um funded by um jonathan ruffer um himself um so they're, they're broadly sort of reliant on that funding coming in so each of those will have a sort of um uh you know a, a dedicated period so I know the Western Loan program in its current form is running till the end of 2022 um, but there's always the possibility that they will extend their support um, beyond that but it's not we're not sort of able to say at the moment and um, this is their second tranche of support for us so um, uh, you know we, we do have a strong relationship with them. Um, the acquisition grants are always always going to be there um, and the um, uh, reimagine grants um, equally we're sort of this year we've sort of reinvented what we offered last year I think the ambition is to continue being able to offer um, that sort of project-based funding um, you know it's not always going to be uh, about uh, COVID recovery because um, hopefully at some point touchwood we will just be on the other side of it um, but I think the, the ambition is that we will continue to have um, ongoing project funding. Yeah, and I think just to add to that as well, I think as we've done in the last year, we're constantly checking in on kind of what the landscape is in museums and how we can best support. Um, so we we will always be kind of looking at that and and sort of updating our programs and how we're supporting museums based on on what that looks like. Um, and I guess just to say as well, in terms of art happens and art tickets. So um, again, we've kind of we have long term ambitions for both of those digital platforms. Um, they should be ongoing art tickets. We want to kind of grow and develop. Um, and art happens we we kind of want more museums to be running campaigns on there um so so yeah i think on those terms we'll we'll be continuing with those um and i've seen that there's another question coming about um mpos um whilst they're eligible are you more likely to expect to see match funding from them um especially when applying to reimagine um i i think we are more likely to be sort of sympathetic to 100% um, funding requests from organisations where, you know, that it's really challenging for them to find funding elsewhere. Um, so where an organisation does has, has secured funding elsewhere, um, I think we would feel sort of more encouraged if they were able to contribute some match funding. Um, but I would also note that um, we, we definitely consider in-kind support as well. Um, so do um, mention that when you're, you're putting your, your application in, in terms of, you know, staff time that you're dedicating to the project um, and so on. 